Hi, everybody. On behalf of AccuStats Video Productions and Diamond Billiard Products, we'd like to welcome you to day number nine of the 2018 Derby City Classic and the Pocket Billiards All-Around 20th Championship. The Derby City Nine Ball Championship is brought to you by Lacasse Custom, and uh, we'd like to say thank you very much to them for so graciously supporting the Derby City Nine Ball event over the years. As is our custom, we are here in the AccuStats Arena at the Horseshoe Southern Indiana, the home of the Derby City Classic for the past 10 years, and as you all know, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. Before I introduce our players for this opening match today, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to Diamond Billiard Products, to Simona's Cloth, and to Cyclop Pooh Balls for being our three great signature sponsors, and also to Master Chalk and our tournament direction team from Bad Boys Billiards Productions. I want to again thank the Horseshoe Southern Indiana for being great hosts. And last but certainly not least, we want to thank all of our great, loyal, Derby City family and fans out there watching and to all of you that have come here to watch with us live and in person. So with that being said, let's get to some nine ball. Here's where we stand. This is round number seven of nine ball. 363 players began. There are approximately 40 players left. Both these players have a rebuy. And just before I introduce them, I want to take one quick second and say congratulations to Francisco Bustamante for becoming the 2018 Derby City One Pocket Champion. Yes, sir. All right, let's play some nine ball. From Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a four-time Derby City nine ball champion, a two-time Derby City world all-around champion, and I think we all know a five-time U.S. Open nine-ball champion. Sponsored by Q-Tech, the USA Pool League, and Ultimate Team Gear, ladies and gentlemen, the South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. His opponent from Bisalig, Surigao del Sur in the Republic of the Philippines. A two-time Derby City nine-ball champion and the defending champion a two-time Derby City World All-Around Champion and the defending champion. He's also a World Nine Ball Champion among his long list of accomplishments. He's sponsored by Mayuchi and Bugsy Promotions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Robocop, Dennis Orcuyo. All right, gentlemen, go ahead. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm going to send it upstairs to the booth to Mark Wilson and to our own five-time Hall of Famer, Danny DiLiberto. Take it away, Mark. I love pool and so does everyone listening and we have yet another feature matchup, SVB versus RoboCop. Hello and welcome along, pool fans. It's Mark Wilson and let's get an opening thought from my longtime partner, Danny DiLiberto. Well, I make this match a toss-up, but Shane has the edge in beaten Ocala many more times than Ocala won. In fact, Ocala for years was trying hard to beat Shane. Maybe it caused him a little more pressure than he needed, but right now I, I rate it a toss-up. Well, there's certainly been some psychological battles here. These, uh, both of these guys are very competitive. They both respect the sport, and probably there's no two players of modern era that put more time on the table than RoboCop. Dennis Orcolo and Shane Van Boning. Race to nine action. Van Boning has won the lag. We'll be breaking. Breaking a diamond and a half in. A little bit different. Eight ball on the wing. Flew in. <laughs> oh, and the cue ball got kissed back into the pocket. That was uh, unfortunate because he had the cue ball parked. Part of the uh, subtleties of nine ball. Can't blame him. He didn't dunk it into the side. He had a square hit, but the ball came and kissed it all the way back into the corner pocket. Now Dennis comes to the table. Wide open layout. When this happens with top players, you almost can give them a win on this particular game. Yeah, the issue is, does it morph into several other wins from the break? Because we're playing a winner break format. These guys have made nine ball into just a science. Races the nine, very fast paced. We 
heard Ken Schumann say that this event started with 363 players. We're down to approximately 40 players. Round seven, both of these players undefeated. And don't go anywhere, folks, because we have to finish this today. This is the last day of the Derby City and the last event, nine ball. Dennis is gliding through an open layout here. Nice two cushion position, falls into a very routine nine ball. This is the angle the top pros like to shoot the nine ball from quite often, just a little bit uh, up table. Two cushion the cue ball for position. Control so they don't scratch. Ocolo one, Van Boning zero. And the rack they're using is the new diamond rack. It's like indestructible. We just bought a, a series of those for Lindenwood and we've been using them. We like them quite a bit. We also use the racking temp template, the AccuRack. And that's the area that Mark is the teacher of. I'm the coach of the Lindawood University Billiards team. We have a fairly prolific team, players from all over the U.S., scholarship athletes, as well as all over the world. In fact, I've seen quite a number of my players here. Russell Carter, Madison Bond just showed up. Sharik Syed, Chris Robinson, Stephen Wyatt. So we're growing the sport. It's kind of the Johnny Appleseed method, one player at a time. We currently have 28 team members. And if anyone listening gets by St. Louis, please stop in and visit us. Or Cole breaking from the left side. Interesting. Nobody's breaking from the side rail here. Six ball on the wing. Oh, six ball rattled the pocket. Is the one going to fall in? No, it gets kissed. Dry break. And he didn't leave anything. But Lee Shane doesn't have to be further humiliated by getting kissed into the pocket on his first attempt. But he has nothing to start with, even kicking this one in, which is a big ball. Right. I wouldn't bet against him not right. making it, but how do you get to the two? Right. Probably going to push out. Push out. He's not going to tie anything up. That's why he pushed out, because there was no way to get... If that was the game ball, he'd be kicking. He's, He's going to make it, I believe. But you can't get position. Well, he might kick this with velocity. I don't think he can get enough velocity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he's just hoping to have a shot at the two to hit it. I don't know if we have time to get the overhead, but if we do, I'd like to show you the shot I think he should play rather than this one. I think he should kick two cushions at it on the inside and try to get separation because this is like you're saying, this is a kick to nothing. Right. You if could he, lose but can't win with this shot. Right. Extension. Unless he's going to go just super high velocity, which... Uh, Makes pocketing the ball quite a bit tougher. But it is a little easier to play when you're forced to play from here, too. So Shane doesn't have a lot of choice. And he's, he knows uh, trying to play safe with Dennis is futile. That will be, a, at best, a break-even deal. Well, you hit it. That might be best. Where are you going, one? Dennis has a combination, I believe. Yeah, Shane's not happy with this start. Shane did the broadcast last night in the finals of the One Pocket with us and uh, shared a lot of good insights. He was uh, very, very giving. He did a great job. It was kind of a treat for a lot of fans. One of the revelations that Shane came out with was that uh, Bustamante has his number. <laughs> He's got a lot of people's numbers. Yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> good shot. That's how respectful Shane is of the game. He doesn't just sit here and talk about his own greatness, but he, he, he brought it up that for, for a long time, Bustamante had his number. He's been doing much better with him in recent times, but 
He said for a long, long time he never beat Bustamante in these things. That's funny the way that works. Ocala doesn't beat Shane. Shane doesn't beat Bustamante. I know how that feels. Oh, nice shot by Dennis there. Beautiful. He made it look easy. It was not. We well, he's been rated like the best Filipino player for many years. Although we have other ones that are great. Yeah, like all of them. I mean, Kiampo and Kiampo. Lee Van Cortez, De Luna, uh, Roberto yeah. Gomez won the Bigfoot Challenge here. Yeah, a lot of great players. And they're not all here. Carlo Biata is another one. Yeah. How about Alex Pagulian? Of course. Now, there's every one of them's good. I don't know any of them that's not good. Is he going real first? He is. Work to keep the only way he could get this angle. Boy, he's smooth on that, too. Just hits it so confidently. That really helps, too. When you believe in your shot, and then you tend to stay still and get through the ball. When you believe in your shot, you got a lot of proof if you're this guy. Yeah. You know, he didn't, he didn't just come out of an egg and watch himself play good once. He's been playing good for many years. Even though he's only 39. No, is that right? I just checked. 38. 38. And 2 0 Robocop. Dennis O'Quill, 38. Shane Van Boning, 34. Neither one of them are even uh, age wise eligible for the Billiards Hall of Fame. Both of them are certain. They're going to be there. Yeah, certain to be destined to be included. There's Jeffrey Dillon looking on. Big crowd here on the TV arena. We had capacity crowd last night, Danny, for the finals. Yeah, they're great fans. They're very knowledgeable. And they all know this is the last chance to see all these players for this year. So that's why they're packing in. Six ball in the wing. It rimmed the pocket last time. Oh, beautiful yeah, break. That time. Look the how NDA, square he hit those. Look where the one is. Yeah, we're off to the races now. And Boning's in danger of getting behind 3 nothing. Of course, with the rules, unlike the 10 ball, 10 ball, we alternated breaks. This is winter break. So you could be five behind and run the five. Yeah, he went a little far, although he could probably get to the corner now. He don't want to. Where the five is, there's no problem. And he got there. <clears throat> nice three cushion position here. Comfortably heads for the center of the table. Last year on the Pro Tour, Dennis Orkulu amassed 102,000 in tournament winnings. This will be his first break and run out of the match, and he expands his lead three games to zero. And really, this has all been set up by Shane winning the lag, breaking perfect, and getting kissed all the way back up into the corner pocket. And it's been all RoboCop since then. It's a race to nine, folks. No call shot. You make the nine on the break, you get a win. How do you feel about the rack versus the template? Danny? Well, I think the template gets everybody the same uh, break. This could be a little barrier, but I, the template, everybody gets exactly the same break. I think it also speeds up the racking, too. Uh, it does, it yeah, does. So I like that part. I like the neutrality, and I like the speed of the racking. But um, anyway, we're using this diamond rack, and it is a high-quality rack. 
just that after you get a lot of play on the tables, that racking area gets so heavily worn that the balls start to sift apart, as you can see. That's the issue here, racking for Dennis. And I don't think it's fan friendly when they have to labor over the rack for a long period no, of time. No, I hate it. I hate it. And, and when I played, my back would hurt if it took a while. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't need that. And that's why the template is a good thing. Yeah, the template has drawbacks too because sometimes balls settle on them or they slow down and get slightly distorted by the. So, either way, there's a and little. And the template wears out, you know. The little holes, right? They wear out. And it changes, and we got to replace it before the match is over. But they're inexpensive enough. That's not shouldn't be a big issue. But nevertheless, we are using the rack, and this is the way it is. The eight ball will be on the wing. Dennis moves the cue ball a little closer to the center of the table, hitting them very square. Here we go. Rack number four. Rocolo three. Look at how square he centered up the cue ball. Made the Couple one. balls. Is he going to get a shot on the two? Oh, Shane will be sick. Yeah. Looks like he does. Yeah, that's no problem here. Yeah, that's, that's not even fun. <laughs> that's what Shane's thinking. Robocop, Dennis Rocolo, thinking yeah, quite the opposite. Shane doesn't look too happy. No. He's in danger of getting poor nothing behind. Oh, he didn't have the shot, but Dennis went after the bank with some distance here in case he missed. Great shot. This is going to be a little tricky. It's fairly thin. You want to hold it for the four, but he's going to roll this softly, I believe. Not soft enough. He's got a shot. That Position's a little tough. He used that speed because it assured him of pocketing the three a little more comfortably and was willing to take what he got on the four. Oh, Dennis is just cruising. Bless you, partner. A little high right, two cushions, right at the seven on the side. This will be a one rail position. No, he's going to kill it. Yeah, don't hit rails if you don't have to. This will be a one rail or two rail position then. Good speed. Yeah, it's been a nine ball clinic so far. That's the second consecutive break and run out for Arcolo. Yeah. The only reason that Van Bonin has nothing is, like you said, the ball kicked in the cue ball on his break. And he hasn't had a chance to win since. Truly, really, this is high performance nine ball. And these guys have every shot down to a science. You can see the break by both players has been tremendous. The decision making and the execution, superlative. This is played at the highest level. You try it at home, it never works like this. It takes years of uh, efforts. And both players have a buyback, so Shane's not dead after this. He's won tournaments from behind. And to win a tournament of this magnitude, you have to steal a match from where you start out 4-0 behind or something. You, you just don't go wire to wire every set. So you just have to wait for your time. But definitely up against it right now. And Shane's not used to finishing badly in tournaments. And so far, he hasn't got too much of the other two. Bank pool in one pocket. There are a lot of good players. There's, oh, there it is. Dennis Arcool playing perfect pool right now. It's a thousand on his TPA. There's no doubt about that. Two ball on the wing. And DeLuna shot 886 last night. 986. 986, I'm sorry. 
almost perfect. One wow, ball. look at this break. Okay, looks like the two balls covered now by the six and eight. Well, I think he can hit it. No, he, he can. Yeah, he can hit it. He can bank it. He can play he can safe. He can bank it. But I think he's just going to roll the cue ball on top of the eight over there. Soft speed. I'm not sure of that. Okay. Now I am. Yeah, that's a good dirty shot. Dirty shot. Very dirty shot. I say that, but it's a great shot, really. This is Shane's, Shane's third visit to the table, Danny. He broke, scratched, then he had a push out that was tough. And now this. Yeah, pool gets pickled sometimes. Dennis is having a heck of a good time. Shane, not so much. Well, he can kick it at one rail or two rails. Good hit. Oh, he's going to get it. Oh, that last little clip on the nine ball hurt him a little. Yeah. Wasn't devastating, but looked like it was really going to be good if he doesn't rub that nine. Oh, I think Dennis is going to try to get behind the three and nine here. Bank the two upstream. And Shane may be kicking again. I think he's going to introduce the cue ball to the three and nine here in yeah. so doing. No. That's what I thought, but he hasn't made up his mind no, yet. No, he's undecided. He's not thinking about cutting this in, I don't think, is he? No, you can't get position cutting it in. So he did try to use the three and nine, and he did it pretty well. I knew it. Shane will well, be kicking again. His only chances so far are kicks. Nice effort there. Hey, Shane might have picked up a little bit of a break here where he did leave an open shot. Yeah, I'm sure Dennis could hit it. I don't know if he could shoot it right in. Yeah, we can see on the overhead he's not going to be able to shoot straight at it. Well, you better have right hand English if you're banking it. Looks or like you'll get a kiss. Looks like that's what the plan was. He almost went in the pocket. Well, here you go, Shane. You got a chance. Not a real hanger, but you got a chance. Now, the cue ball is going to be just a little lively because it's a thin cut. Does he play for the 3-9 combination? I don't think he oh, wants he to Oh, he can get... play for the three in the side. I think that's a better choice. That's what he did, and he sure got there. Could he hold it up now and shoot the four on mm -hmm. the side also? Might have to draw the ball to the rail to do that. That's what he did, and he Good did shot. it very nicely. Yep. One of the things about Shane, he really respects the sport. And uh, sometimes his facial countenance suggests that maybe he's not feeling good, but he's totally focused. And what makes him so strong is he's not afraid to lose. That's well, he, he's had a very good career so far. He's made money. He became respected. Can't do more than that in life. No, he's he's one of the pool players that's a little smarter. Has invested his money wisely, thinking about the future. Yeah, as great of a player as he is, he's even a better person. Yeah, he is. I agree with you. And we're talking like he's dead here. He's not, because he's got a tremendous break. He could easily string three or four games. Perfect angle, because he can bounce off the cushion. The 
the speeds they choose and the way they hit the pocket and just the way the cue ball moves, it's something special. Very subtle. Van Bonin gets on the scoreboard now. With his first real turn at the table, he trails in this match four games to one. <clears throat> the break is so fickle. You can hit a good, much like Van Bonin did, get kissed in, or you can make balls and not get a shot quite often. Well, you call it fickle. I have different words for it. <laughs> it's a chance. <laughs> There's nothing about yeah. it. I don't believe in that stuff about he breaks him better and just, you got to get lucky on the break. Don't you agree with that? Well, I mean, sort of, but. Kind of. I mean, you got to hit him square like these guys, and then you have to get lucky. You know, if you don't hit him square, then I don't really think it's luck at that point. These guys practice their break religiously, and you'll see it. It's tangibly better than an amateur's break because they've worked on it so hard. Arcolo now down to 973 from a perfect score. <laughs> Based on just that one singular bad safety he just played. That allowed Van Boning to run out. Here we go. Six ball on the wing. It flew in. Wow, look at that break. Where are you, one? He okay. made the eight. He's got a shot on the one. And this is what I'm saying. This is not luck. He hit those so square. A lot of ball action. Shane checks out the angle he would like to have on the two if he could get straight in. Then the three's in the side, four. Everything would be looking good. Glides in there one rail. Shane's looking to pick up some momentum. Stuns the cue ball, a ball or two width forward. Improve his position on the three. Nice. Negated some of that collision induced side spin left by introducing just a hint of right to straighten it up off the end rail. That was well done. Well controlled. That was good. Shane goes all the way back so he doesn't have to fool around with the seven. He can come at it from a different direction. Yeah, he'll just draw a one rail either way. <clears throat> Pretty good. And extremely well done by Big Haas here for America. Shane Van Boning. That was his first break and run out of the match. And he trails two games to four. Looking at some of the outer tables, there's about 40 players still left. I see John Mora playing. I see Joshua Filler, Jason Shaw not playing each other. Just looking at Paggy Lyons out there playing. Oh, Bustamante. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is going to be a heck of a day of action here for us. <laughs> These matches broadcast themselves, Danny. You're right. All great players. To win this tournament, you got to beat them all. Oh, my goodness. Everybody, this is day nine. They've dialed in on these tables for nine days, uh, eight to ten hour days. We're going to see some high-powered time ball today. Like we're seeing now. Yeah, like we're seeing now, yeah. Van Boning now up to 895 on his total performance average. Shane takes a little time, aiming. A lot of care on his approach to the break. This time it's the five ball on the wing. Come on. Hits it the middle of the in. pocket like a bullet. The one checked up right into the pocket. The two's next to it. <laughs> Here we go. Well, when you're making the wing ball like that, 
It's extra special to protect the cue ball. Don't find a pocket. Hit them solid, and you're going to make that wing ball and have stuff like this. <laughs> well, he got a little more angle than he wanted. Yeah, we figure that he will handle this effortlessly. Doesn't have to hit it very hard. Perfect. Superior speed control. Worked the cue ball very close to the three. Now he can pick up the exact angle he wants on the six. That will enable him to get from the seven and eight. Just wants to get to the center of the table and preserve that angle. Does not want to get straight in at all. Outstanding. Now the B-side rail, side rail. Two-cushion route. And leave himself an angle. Like that cue ball come over there and hit just about where the second diamond is. Near his cue. There's the second diamond. He frees himself from the cushion. And the second consecutive break and run out for Shane Van Boning. Pretty much textbook nine ball right now. This is one inning nine ball, meaning the first good shot results in the kill the majority of the time. 929, the total performance average for Van Boning, 973, Orcolo. Everyone. Enjoying this performance by both players. We played seven games. There's probably only been a total of four innings. Eight ball on the wing. Kaboom. Eight hits the middle of the pocket. The cue ball gets kissed yet again. It went in. Oh, no, it was, he had it stopped out there. And for the second time, Shane... Uh, yeah. He's That's why I say mm. the break is luck. Fickle. Good or bad. <laughs> yeah. And, when, and like I said uh. earlier, when you scratch on the break with players like this, you can almost assuredly give them a win. Always when I do the total performance average, I, I just can't bring myself to, to levy a penalty on the, <laughs> the good, uh, the ugliest of kisses. Well, the two is sitting a little funny. Yeah. That's about the extent of Shane's hopes here is that Arcolo can't develop the two. And Dennis is thinking about going into the seven here, the three and the seven. It gives him a fairly big gap, and that will separate the balls and leave the two free. No, he's playing position for the two. Look at that speed. Yeah, in between. That's field goal position. Still not easy, though. He oh, just he's rolled got in. Good okay. angle to make the three in the other side. Especially hitting the five. Boy, it was. Really well played. I have to credit him there. He got into a tight space there to make the two and then get position for the three. He knows Van Boning's ability, and when you get a shot to get out, you better get out. Yeah, pool is a game that you can never master. You can just hold it at bay sometimes. That was a nice decision there. 
Dennis did not want to mess around trying to go around these balls, so he set up a position to draw back down, go straight to his position area. Watch out for the pockets. Good shot. Mm-hmm. Good shot. He's got a good angle to get close to the seven. Optimum position. Just cruise the cue ball forward a little bit. The nine ball. 5-3 will be our score. Or pull in front. <clears throat> they call her Cola Robocop. Do you have any idea why? I do not. He doesn't look like a RoboCop. Well, he's kind of a robot when he plays. I mean, he you don't see uh, any time wasted. It's, and sometimes you'll even see him play one-stroke pool, which you don't see that many top players do that, where they switch their form technique. Today we're seeing the more careful Dennis Orgolo, but I've seen him definitely where he's played all week like this and to just go one-stroke on everything. <clears throat> Quick cleaning of the balls. Diamond billiard equipment, the finest in the game, I would say. No, oh, completely agree. One piece slate, nobody else produces a one piece slate nine footer. It helps two different things. One, it allows you to set these tables up quite quickly. There's 28 leveling points factory set at the uh, factory. If that makes any sense, but nevertheless, they level up really well and you don't have the slate seams. There's 50 tables here that are being used, and you could never set up 53 piece slates unless you, tables, unless you had a heck of a staff or you had two weeks of time, which they have neither. So a great design here for pro tournaments. And then you get rid of those slate seams that uh, sometimes cause problems. All right, Robocop now happy with the rack. He's leading 5-3 and will be breaking. Shane has been victimized by the break where he had the cue ball stopped out under the table. And twice a ball has kicked it into the far corner pocket. This time it's the two ball, that's the wing ball. Oh, okay, a mistake here for Marcolo. Yeah, he made the cue ball. Now he is in danger of losing this game. <laughs> Kind of a tough combination on the nine if Shane wants to go after it because it's makeable, but if you don't get perfect on it. So I think Shane will go a three cushion route. I don't know. Well, he's going to look at the combo. But yeah, the six ball makes it kind of tough to get perfect on it. So he's going to go a three cushion route to play the two ball in the far corner pocket past the three ball. He did that. Did that very nicely. He got kind of straight, but he'll be fine. Stop there, you got the three.
Yeah, he had room to get a little better. Shane can play this conservatively and just let the cue ball just travel one foot, just glide into the side cushion, preserve an angle, and play this five ball in the furthest corner pocket from where it rests. Yeah, one short rail with the cue ball will be perfect. Very nice shot. Economy of travel with the cue ball, that uh, lends itself to consistency. Two cushions right where his hand's at now. Went a little far. No question about it. Now he's in between, and this is all of a sudden, it's gotten just a little tough. Well, he can hit the eight. That'll control the cue ball a little bit. But he doesn't want to graze the eight and have it slide into the side cushion over here by the second diamond uh, coming up out of the far corner pocket. Uh, did. He hit it hard enough that the eight came back down by the seven, so that makes things a little bit better. But this is this is just where he didn't want to be if he had a choice. Now he's got to be a shot maker. Which he is. I wouldn't bet against him this game. No, we feel great about his chance to score here. Still, it's not a gimme. Yeah, he missed it. You're right. Yep. Uh, yeah. The psychological drama. He knew he got on the wrong side. He knew that eight ball was going to lead the cue ball to the side cushion. He was hoping to not have to deal with that. And, and he was only two games behind, and with the break going the way it is, he figured to catch him. This is, a, this is really, in my estimation, the first mistake by Shane Van Boning. Yeah, he didn't get real good on the six. But that's what I've been saying, that he's not... Shane lately. And now our score is 6-3. Dennis takes advantage of the unforced error. We're going to have a brief timeout by Arcolo. 6-3. Arcolo playing 979. Arcolo racking and leading 6-3. Seems satisfied. Last year, Dennis Arcolo was the all-around champion here. Oh, he took something off the break. Why? He's been making the wing ball. Why would he do this? Oh, well, once again, the two is sitting a little bit tricky, especially if you're over the eight. It's going to be tough to fall on the two. Super tough layout here. Very Shane. tough position here. Yeah. Just pretty much have to play position to play safe. I think you can possibly be aggressive enough to try to go out here. Yeah. He hey. couldn't fall on the two. I know he's not going to play the combination. He figures to play safe. He's looking to see if the two passes. I don't think it does, but he's in a better spot to see it. Well, he's... He's doing he's something with the it. two, he's yeah. Shooting it. it must pass. He's going to go one rail to the three. No, nope, he played the combination. Wow. Second guessed. Great shot. Guessed wrong. Great shot there. Yeah, and he could glance the nine and continue on down to the three. Pretty thin hit. Yeah. That's now the one that thing. I see it this way, it is a Tough, tough position. 
This is one of those, yeah, spots where if you decide to take it on, don't even think about the nine ball going in the side or just just play a speed and try to ensure that you make the two ball. Well, sometimes the score makes you decide what to do here. I think he's got to play safe, but that's not going to gain three games. He's cutting at it and missing it. That's what we're talking about. He's not the shame. He left the shot on it. Yeah, he fell funny on the two, and he couldn't overcome it. I thought he should play safe, but... I don't like, know if we could get a replay on that, Danny, but I think Shane moved his body, lunged at it just a little bit on that one. Yeah, he's... Well, that's what pressure does. He's down 6-3 and knows he needs to really make something happen. That's what I said. The score sometimes tells you what you got to do, and he decided to shoot. He's going to pay for it. Ocola will take advantage of that. Here we go, we get another shot. We're gonna show that again. He didn't cut it enough. Yeah. You know, and it looks like he got snookered anyway. Well, if the match continues in this fashion, this is all I can say. I feel sorry for Shane Van Boney's next opponent. <laughs> Somebody will pay for this. He had a couple bad uh, luck scratches from the break, and now he's missed two balls that uh, he tried to play. But once again, he's got a buyback, so he's not dead yet. Right. It's like you say, I, I'd hate to be the one playing him next match. Yeah. He's going to pound somebody. Even the rack is going to feel that. 7 3 our score. Shane made such a good combination there, you know, man. and maybe, maybe he should have played safe in retrospect. Cause but like I said, if he were winning six to three, he probably would have played safe. But he was losing, and he figured, I got to gain these games. Maybe. I'm going to shoot. Yep. Yeah, it's so he's... psychological, this game. It's certainly been an entertaining match, though. Fast-paced, high quality of play. Arcolo. Hovering at 964 on the TPA. I get the feeling that Van Boney is not entertained. No, not for him, for us, for the there fans. There he is, but yeah. he, he'll accept it, like you said. You know you're going to lose matches. Just don't give up. Right. Well, despite the fact that he did have two unfortunate scratches on the break, it's the two misses that separate the players, you know, that Shane had. He, he That's four games. Right, so... It's, uh, and you know, those are the uh, vagaries of uh, nine ball. Uh, weird things happen. The what? I don't know. What is that? The Vagary. variations. Oh, you know. yeah. I just like to know all the words oh. you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here it is. Vagaries. It's a noun. Unexpected and inexplicable change in a situation or in someone's behavior. All right. Here we go. 7-3. All that Shane can do is prepare mentally for an opportunity. You don't know that you're going to get it. You expect to, you plan to, and prepare for it. <clears throat> Last time, Arcolo took a lot off the break. Eight ball on the wing. When Arcolo took a lot off, nothing happened. So I think he'll go back to power. He did. Squared him up. Two is going to bank. Yep. Not quite. Uh, in interesting. 
the table has now gotten broken enough from all the play because the two ball would have hugged the rail early in this tournament and gone on in the pocket. But now the table's starting to get broke in. Well, Shane has a little bit of a tricky shot in the side, but position goes with it if he can make it. Well, so you're not shooting it for nothing. Well, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like he could just make a stop shot and stick on the three. Right. He's going to play safe this time. Good shot. Yeah, you, there's no sense uh, playing a bad shot just because you're behind the score. You still have to play the right shot. Now, if Dennis hits this one, the nine ball could be in play. Yeah, there is a possible billiard. I mean, but the hit is tough. Super low percentage anyway. He's got to hit the low part of the one on the number. Yeah. And he did. He came close to making it. Oh, and then oh, it hangs this. up. <laughs> this is when you're going bad, Shane. This is uh, day one. That ball scratches, too, by the way, because it had the right kind of spin. Now the table's broke in, and this is super tough to deal with. Pinned in the pocket. He can hit the ball. I don't know if he can make it. Maybe he could up the corner. No. Uh, no good. Yeah. Dennis will be cutting at this. Yeah. It's just not going his way at all. He actually played a pretty good shot there to get it back down here. He's just disappointed that the balls just absolutely refuse to let him assert himself into this match. I think he could play this off the nine. That'll give him better control of the cue ball. That's a nice thought. Yeah, I think it goes. Cutting the one, you're going to lose the cue ball a little bit. I think it goes right in off the nine. Easier to control the cue ball. Yeah. He's thinking about it. Still hasn't made up his mind. If he plays off the nine, then he doesn't have to hit the cue ball on any other balls. If he plays, cuts it cleanly, he has to play it off the six. He chose to play it off the six. And he controlled Whitey pretty well. He didn't get a great angle on the two to get to the three. The path he's got to go, the seven is probably going to obstruct him a little. Not much. Good shot, but what do you do with the three? Play the eight? I don't think that's the play. Maybe he's content does with it. he bank this? Yeah, it's a slight off angle bank, but it leads to a win if you make the bank. Yeah, I think he can cut it a little bit and bank yeah. it. I think that's easier than the combination. Ten well, he played the combination. He's got a, a billiard now, I believe. I think he can control the three. He'll shoot the three in the corner to his right if he makes the four, but I think he will. He needs to hit this three super thin. Yeah, no problem there. Too thin. He hit it too oh, thin. Oh, okay. Well, I was wrong. A much needed a opportunity yeah. for Shane Van Boning. That's all you can hope for. He's still in this match. He knows it. Now does the seven go by the nine? Clearly it does, based on where he played position here. He's 
going to come through the center of the table here. Beautiful speed. Okay, a much needed miss on a carom shot by Dennis Arcolo. Shane Van Boning picks up his fourth one in this match, but more importantly, picks up the break. He's not out of this match yet, the way he breaks. The wing ball is going. There's the rack track. It's kind of an interesting rack track. We normally have a little more sparring here. Four in a row, Arcolo, or in the Filipino pronunciation, Orculio. Van Boning won three, Orculio three more, and now Van Boning won. Van Boning, right of the head spot. Two ball on the wing. No, oh, it flew in. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's nobody that breaks better than Shane Van Boning for my money. You're right. Nobody. You try to hit him square, but if you haven't put the hours in, you can't consistently pepper that rack like he can. He practices the break sometime for hours. <laughs> Not sometime, every day. You don't get it looking like this by happenstance. Or his timing's good, but and now he's straight in on the one ball. He's going to have to force the angle, elevated cue. This is not the shot that you like to start your inning with. Yeah. Down Hit in the, the bottom of, of the pocket. pocket yeah. And it came back out. I, I would have just it, sensed it and played position three to the four. That would have been a better way. More importantly, it didn't hit the back of the pocket. It actually hit down in the pocket, but it was bouncing. It bounced back up. It, it hit the back of the pocket, went downward, hit the bottom of the pocket, bounced back up on the table. You don't see that very often on a diamond pool table. You will see it on others. Maybe in just a little bit we can get another look at that. Let's slow it down just a little bit for everybody. That would be interesting. Well, we're going to see safety. Yeah, mercifully, Shane didn't leave a shot. That would really be sick. At least he's not out of it. He's disappointed. The arrangement of the balls is just not working out his way right now. I have to try to bend it with draw. Safe. Oh, he didn't get there. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Hey, we got to see that shot on... And Here it is. Watch it. It'll yeah, go down deep into the pocket. Slow mo. Boom. You're right. It almost went off the table. Yeah, it was hopping. Hmm. Yeah, this is not an easy shot to play position from. I don't know if you can get. <laughs> but at the same time, you're glad you're at the table. Oh, delighted. Yeah, of course. Shane's looking at playing a thin cut on the one and how he wants to have the cue ball collide into the seven ball. I don't know. He uh, would have to come back a little. That's going to be tricky. And he can't go forward. Might scratch, but he's shooting your shot. Or maybe he's going to collide into the five. I don't think he can avoid both of them. Make the one ball here, no matter what. He went bank. That afforded him a lot more control of the cue ball. Well, you didn't leave a shot. The five might be dead, but right. how do you hit it? Dennis is going to kick at it, I guess, between the three and nine. I <laughs> think he can cut it thin enough to make it without kicking. Perhaps so, yeah. But you're right. Nothing's going good for Bamboni. Well, Dennis is trying to play the five. Super thin hit, and he wants to control the cue ball from a super thin hit, which means there's a lot of things that can go wrong with that. Now he's considering kicking for that reason. I think he's going to settle on the kick now. Back to the cut. I guess this way he feels like he knows he's going to make the five. He did. 
Oh, oh look how the run held. Yeah. Straight in. But how do you get to the three now? Rail first? Yeah, I think that's what we're going to see. There's not a full pocket down there. You certainly don't want to roll the one in and try to play the three from there. So rail three. first is his only option. They hit the shot really well earlier in the match. This one's a little more difficult. One ball's a, a solid inch and a quarter from the cushion. And it's a diamond and a half from the pocket. Wants to take a moment here, collect himself. Hey, we get another look at that combination. This was hard to control the cue ball from, and you can see he had to get a lot of power on that. Well, here we go, rail first. Good shot. Nicely played. Work the cue ball closer to Good pocket speed. the three past the eight. The eight obstructs the pocket just slightly, but it's a it's a more of a visual dynamic than it is an accuracy issue. It's in your eye, and it's like a magnet. A lot of times that object ball just seems to be headed right into that eight He's ball. He's got a half a pocket. Nice composure Great there shot. to make that. Well, this this game gets him on the hill. Speed. So comfortable on these patterns, what the best play is. And then confidence goes with it. Great execution. Eight to four is our score. The story goes like this. Dennis Arculo watched his grandfather lose the family money playing pool as a boy. Vowed revenge on the pool world, and here he is. He's made quite a mark. What did it say? He won 102000 last year in tournaments? Yeah. Yep. That'll feed a family. Yeah, in the Philippines. It'll really be something. Naturally, there's a lot of expense out of that. But that also does not include any sponsorship revenues or perhaps uh, side tournaments or gambling, gambling matches. Shane's hoping for one last chance here. Get himself back in the match. If he could get an inning and get a, pick up a couple quick games, get a little Arcolo. momentum his way, and then maybe have a bad roll for Arcolo. Arcolo shoot 942. That's tough to beat. Yeah, you rarely see that lose. Yeah, I don't think there'll be any more little cutesy breaks here. I think it's still going to be full on power now. After Dennis tried that one. Oh, it flew in. So did the cue ball. And the one ball. That's a mistake. Well, Shane's getting the last chance he wanted. You know, and that is the difference because when you look at Shane's break, Shane more effortlessly gets the power up to that degree because he's bigger and more sturdy build where Dennis has to put all his might in there, and he loses the cue ball quite often from there. Yeah, I noticed that he's bigger. <laughs> well, I mean, that, what wait, I mean wait, is wait, his, wait. his fitness level. An outdoorsman. I don't know of any bad habits he's got. I don't either. 
a chronic practicer. Likes to ice fish, though. I never understood that. I don't like fishing too good anyway, but especially not in cold. Did you ever eat a fish? Oh, I love fish. I love the fish. Well, yeah. someone has to catch them. Why can't it be you? Uh, well, I don't mind if you do, and I'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for me. I'd rather watch two bad players play safe play in one pocket than <laughs> sit out there all day trying to hope He's a fish. He's South Dakota. Theodore Roosevelt spent a lot of time in South Dakota. A lot of outdoorsmen there. Two cushion round or three cushion round here to the nine. Yes, three. Yeah, but the third rail don't count. And he falls into perfect position from this third cushion. And just what Shane needed here. This will be his fifth win. He knows he's in striking range, though. Twice, Arcolo has scratched on the break. Once, he went with a soft break. So that's well, really his failings. I've been saying it. Match. He's not out of the match. The way he breaks. There's a little fan. Look at that kid. Mm -hmm. Think he likes pool? <laughs> yeah. Always nice to have kids like that here in attendance. We don't have enough of that. Time to go to work for Shane Van Boning. Should make the pour. <laughs> Flew in, and the cue ball didn't go in. Top Look spin, at hang up. The five hang went, up and he's got the two. Okay. Yeah, you want it to be a close match. I, I, I know. I, I want feel a little the more same equity. Way. I want a little more fairness is all. Yeah. Well, <laughs> don't go anywhere, folks. This match is not over. Shane recognizes that the one's so deep, the cue ball's going to hit the point and then go into the two, which, you know, if you go rail first here, it's a, you know, that's just hard. If he goes into the two and he picks up any speed, he can just stay, hug the yeah, end he, rail and knock the two ball yeah, a little bit down Rail too. first, he's not going to miss the two hitting it. Oh, he got around it pretty good, but it chipped it he's up still, enough. Yeah, he's still I don't got know a if cut he has, it. If he has a cut at, then so be it. That's not a bad result. He's got the cut, but he's also got the bank. Mm. Well, you know he doesn't want to bank, but look at it. position routes. I don't think he can go slow enough to go between the three and eight and play the three in the side, which would be ideal. But then if he has to go between the three and nine, now the scratch in the corner looms large. And I don't know that he can expand this enough to get out around the nine. That's what he's looking at now. And come around three cushions. Is he trying to kill it? No, he's going around the table. Oh, he grazed the he three. He clipped the three. That might be to that. No, he's no. got a shot. Oh, got a good break there. Um, he deserved one. You're I don't right. Mean like that. But what I'm saying is it could have turned out ugly after making a pretty good shot of the two ball. He's working hard. The good news is the six is right over the side. Oh, no. No, that's no, no, not no. Shane. He made it anyway. Oh, no. But, but that's not Shane. And the problem with that is it now destroys your confidence. Now you start to second guess everything. But it's not a, I mean, he's got to cash this in for that to mean anything anyway. Thin shot here. Two cushions in between the eight and nine. No, he's using draw. You know, if that happened in your plane in Japan, the Japanese player will bow to you, like apologetically. And I only said that because I wanted to use apologetically. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I don't, because that's the rules, and the other guy takes it, so I don't even bother with spending any time belaboring that I got some good fortune. All right. Well, not the cleanest of breaking runs, but nevertheless, 
Some good work by Van Boning. That's his third break and run of the match. He's only two games behind. Ocola knows it too. The break is so good that two games you don't feel comfortable. The only good thing is Shane cannot make another mistake or he's dead. He missed the three, which was not a tough shot, and he accidentally made it. Whew. That was frightening to see it trickling down the rail at soft speed, see if it was going to get there. And he's wearing his Moscone Cup shirt, showing that he was playing for USA. Well, that's not actually the case. This is a shirt that's custom made for the Shane Van Boning fans. It does say USA on it. But Shane's sponsored by UTG, and it's oh, a great company. This. He made a ball, and the eight got right in the way. Well, I don't want to hear any crying about bad luck because uh, he was pretty fortunate in that last rack. It is unfortunate they didn't get a shot from the break. Well, when He's you push out here, tie up a ball. I got to tie the four up with the five. The push without doing that, you're going to get the worst of it. That's what the Russian player, of course, doesn't know yet, but he'll figure it out. See the group right across from us here? That's a group of fans that have uh, come to uh, the majority of the Derby City Classics, they, and many of them live right here in New Albany, Indiana. I, was, I sat over there with them during a match yesterday. It was really interesting how in the pool they are. They watch streams. Well, he's not tying up anything. No, he's pushing out to a, uh, he's probably going to get this kick. back. Well, he might have left this straight in. I don't know, it's close. Wow. Well, if he did, you know Dennis will shoot. And if he did, if he left this straight in, that that's a catastrophic error. He didn't. Well, you call it straight in. It's a cut. The cue uh, ball is going to be. Is, yeah. I know he left the shot. Is what you're saying? Well, I don't know that he did now because Dennis is looking as if he did. I think he did. I think he did. Okay. He's got a cut. Could he roll it soft enough to hold it for the three? Uh, no, he's got a half mass at it, so it's not straight. Dennis is going to play it though. He feels comfortable to hit it this way. <laughs> he made it. Where are you going? Look how much side perfect. spin was on there. Yeah. Yeah, he curved it. Dennis made a great shot, no question about it. Well, anyway, getting back to my that group over there, I think the world of them as fans, and they have discovered the absolute optimum seats here. A lot of family members over there. They're high enough, and they got the perfect angle, and they don't have any blockage on it, so it's a great view. It's actually similar to our view, except... When you're sitting over there, you don't have to work. Except we could talk about it, and they can't. No, they do. Just not that many people hear them. But they definitely conjecture about the matches. Rocolo pulls the cue ball back to get perfect position for a straight-in combination. That makes this combination play much easier. It's no gimme. He made it look easy. Now he'll be drawing back. He needs one game to win the match. I don't know, can he get off the cushion? I don't think he can fight with that. I think he's just got to draw it back to the side pocket or just beyond and settle for how the cue ball hangs along that side cushion. Just past the side pocket. Very good. 
And Dennis definitely sees the goal line. Yeah, this is one of those little in-between shots here. And how it hits the pocket dictates where the cue ball goes. If you hit the pocket fat, it takes a lot of pace out of the cue ball. If you hit it thin, it can bump into the eight, maybe. He missed it. I know, he couldn't get off the cushion. Oh, I want to tell you something. Shane right. can win this match now. Okay, Big Hoss. <laughs> it's got a little funny on this angle. You have to strike downward to stun it forward rather than roll it forward. Smooth. Good shot. Yeah, smooth cueing action there. That was good. And now Shane Van Boning within two games of winning this match. That would be quite the rally. I think he called for the cue ball to be cleaned. Well, the Ken Schumann been doing it every rack throughout the week. And you always say, <laughs> Ken Schumann, the hardest working man in pool he might be. He's certainly energetic when he's in the arena. He has good command of the rules and good command of the, uh, the entire environment there. Spectators, players, everyone respects him. Well, this would be quite interesting if Shane could make a ball in the break and get a shot on the one. Tie this thing up at 8-8. Eight, eight. Six ball, the ball about to be punished. It flew in again. One and ball. One. No, yeah. Oh, and not a shot on the two, really. Difficult. You might have a bank, but that's not good. Yeah, it's, it's a diamond below, and the cue ball's above the side pocket. You're pretty much betting the game. I don't think you can be cued if you play the bank and try to play position. This is just all-out offense. I don't even, I don't think he'll take that on. I don't think he'll even entertain that. I think you cut the two to the end rail, one rail, and go maybe behind the eight. He kind of checked in on the four if he wanted the cue ball behind the four there on that same type of a shot. He for sure got the two on the end rail. I think he can hit it. No, he can't. Perfect snooker. Was it? If it was, then that's, that's going to be an effective shot. It is a perfect snooker. He's got to kick one rail in front of the side. Maybe two this way if he could get in behind it. Well, behind it would probably control the cue ball better. And get some distance that two would get kicked down table. Dennis is weighing out the percentages and feels kicking this way is slightly higher in terms of getting the result. Good hit. Gonna sell out. Okay. Definitely. Shane earns an opportunity now from his good safety play. And I think the three goes in the side past the five. It's fairly thin into the side. I don't know if Shane can hold it comfortably. He's checking it. Maybe he can. He's it's over a the five. It's than you might think. He's over the five, though. So. Oh, that's the obstruction, but he's going to have the three in the other side rolling this in. Maybe the corner. Maybe the corner. Where did he go? Okay, good. He's yeah. okay. Yeah, from where he was at, this was this looks tremendous to me. And you you made a good call there that he could hold it. I didn't think he could jack up and hold it that well. Yeah, he contained the cue ball.
If he can finish direct, we're going to have a sweater's delight. <laughs> we'll He'll have build. action, won't we? Yep. And I kind of think he's going to get out. This shot right here will go a long way to telling the tale. Needs to get out there for the five. Oh, beautiful. Oh, perfect angle, beautiful too. Beautiful shot. He's got the angle to get on the six. Well, he, he's just gonna, seven? it's a seven, but he's a little straight. But he'll just draw back to where he's at now and play it from there. That's comfortable. Yeah, he's going to need an angle to get to the eight anyway. And he'll get it here. Good enough. Beautiful. Now it's side rail. Draw the cue ball back behind the other side pocket. Make sure it releases from the side rail so that if you do fall a little straight, you can do something with the cue ball. Oh, he played it yeah. perfect. Yeah, he's going to get the good angle. And he released it from the rail. I kind of like the top spin two rails. No, I think he'll go one rail. One rail? Okay. I think so, yeah. Maybe he has a little more angle. Yeah, I think you're right. One rail. And good speed there. This well, particular run was all built from that good safety that Shane played, forced uh, Dennis to have to kick. Good stuff here, Danny. 8-8 eight, eight is our score. <laughs> Shane's going to take his player timeout, come back, play one rack, to try to remain undefeated. He has rallied from adversity uh, right from the start. We are prepared. The balls are racked. Can Schumann's polish the cue ball? The three balls, the wing ball, it's been hitting the absolute middle heart of the corner pocket repeatedly when Shane breaks. And here we go, it's 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> People are loving it, they're applauding, their pleasure. And Boning set the break. Squared up the cue ball. Oh, he, he controlled the oh, cue ball. He wants that cute one ball to stop here. He's got control, oh, now no. the two got funny. It might have got dead. This didn't get dead. Did it? I oh, don't know. Maybe. It's close. Yeah, it is closer than I thought at first from looking up here, but when I look on the overhead, but Shane's not going for it. He's not he liking hasn't it. He right it. He'd rather play the two clean. But we got action here anyway. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, he's not even thinking about the combination. I guess he? the two passes to six and the eight, or the seven and the eight. Oh, beautiful he shot. Perfectly. Beautiful shot. Yeah, the two passes, apparently. Now, this is where that real fine execution comes in. And that's what we were saying earlier that Shane's been struggling with a little bit. Dennis gives him the stare down there. Well, the three ball is, is gone, so he just has to stick and play the four in the side. No problems. Oh, oh, the oh seven no. ball moved down funny on the nine. Just a little bit. I think it still goes. It does. <laughs> I don't think he wanted to gamble at that. No, it makes it makes position quite a bit tougher, though. He's going to get a three-rail route. I don't know if... Yeah, I don't think he has to go to the rail. I think he can just roll this in and get the three-rail route. No, he's going to the rail. Giddy on up. Now he's got the three rail to the seven. Yeah. He fell just a little bit flat here now, and that long rail, the same rail that he's going to go into right now, just below the side pocket comes into play as far as You're right. the cue ball settling in there. Because he's got to worry about the side pocket. Right. It's going that path. It looks like he's going one rail. He's not messing with the three railer. He's coming backwards. No, he isn't. He went too strong. Make up your mind, DiLiberto. Slow down. No, yeah, I was afraid it was going to settle into the rail, but he has a shot. That's all I can ask for. And, and seriously, 
if you if you fail on the seven ball, you weren't going to beat Dennis Arcolo anyway. So you might as well just go ahead and make a good stroke here. The good thing about this shot is position is automatic if you make it. Yes. You know, if you had to play position, something intricate, the shot would be way tougher. But if he makes it, he's going to have a shot to win the match. Just being on the rail did it to him. That's what we've been talking about. Shane is not sharp. He's smiling. He don't feel like it, but he's smiling. But he does have a buyback. Yeah. He got pretty good on the eight. That was the issue when he fell a little funny on the five. He didn't really get the perfect three row route that he could well, control. Totally. was clutching his heart. <laughs> yeah, cardiac arrest. Routine nine ball now for the match. Match ball. And Okolo will remain undefeated. Yeah, I'm sure Shane's disappointed. Okay, what's Okolo going to show his backers? Where he just missed? Yeah. Okay, he's going to show the backer that he can make this. <laughs> well, the cue ball wasn't on the rail to begin with. Well, that's even better. <laughs> but anyway, Dennis going to challenge himself. Well, it's been fun. Kind of a lackluster ending as the crowd files out. This has been an AccuStats video presentation. Thank you for sitting in with us today. That's our time for this time. So long and adios. Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A cue with a revolutionary X-Shocks dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum cue control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only cue that matters.